You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Wilfred After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Wilfred After Show. Yeah. Man, I love the music in the show. It really... It's just super cute and weird and quirky and a little dark. Yeah. Absolutely fits just the like, show. Just like us. Just and like more us. to the point in the show. What show? And more to the point the show. What? Oh, right. We were watching a show? Uh, the show. What's the show? Uh, hey, uh, guys. Bing is for doing. And we are here to do the Wilfred After Show. Right on. And I'm, I'm John Barrett. This guy right here is... I'm Jack Bing Waz. That's right. We call him Bing. I'm Greg Guinness. Siobhan Hughes is absent tonight. She is preparing doing for Doing some a... stupid... She's binging. She's doing a play, yeah, which she's, is good she's for her. She's binging herself a play. Binging. Do you guys know that you can, uh, you can bing other search engines? Did you know that? Oh my God, why would Jack. you want to? Because why, would want I, to? No, why would you want to? But I'm, say, I'm saying it's like it's a magical world of... It's like a snake eating its own tail. It's crawled up its own butt, you guys. Speaking of butts, Wilfred. <laughs> Wilfred he smells of them loves very the well. smell of butts. He does love the smell of butts. And in tonight's episode... Entitled... entitled now... now uh, we said that together. That was kind of a beautiful really, really harmonizing cute. moment. We really, that was really cute, Greg. Uh, Wilfred... Guys, did you did you pick up on this? Wilfred lost his sense of smell for her. He did. For a hot second. Not something that I originally picked up on because I, I saw that they were making a big deal of Wilfred and stopping to smell the roses, but that's not where I thought they were going to go with it. So it was a really pleasant surprise for me. Yeah, I also, I, I, also, I also didn't see it coming. I think that might be because I'm stupid. <laughs> it's possible it was brilliant writing. I... I thought they were going to really run with the cancer thing. I because kind they... of hoped for that a little <laughs> yeah, bit. I was like, I would, I would love to see an entire episode of Elijah Wood just thinking he has cancer. That'd be really great. Um, but instead, we have Elijah Wood leading around what is essentially a broken dog. Wilfred yeah. in crisis. Yeah, he, he was just like a fantastic line uh, when Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder walked in on each other masturbating. Because that's the only cause for blindness. The more you know. So, guys, hey guys whatever you do guys, tonight. <laughs> being Ray Charles and jerking off in the same sentence. You know, do, do yourself a favor. Go to image search. Turn off safe search. That right. thing has one of those, right? So, oh, turn off safe God. search and search Anyways, Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder jerking off. If you do that, you will be in crisis, as was <laughs> Wilfred. You'll probably lose your smell. I, I, You would have to. You'd lose a lot of things. Probably your lunch as well. Faith in humanity. Which, yeah. by the way, before we get too deep into Wilfred just being a dark, dark character, I want to point out Elijah Wood throwing up on screen. Not something you're going to see in The <laughs> Hobbit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you... Did you... <laughs> It, it, it seems more that? north material, or perhaps Deep Impact, one of his you know darker works. Or um, or when he was in. Um, you remember uh, when he was that movie about retarded kids I, no. called? Uh, it was like the Bumblebee flies away, and it's Elijah Wood. It's like him, and he's crippled somehow, and he's hanging out with a bunch of retarded kids, and then there's something with a bumblebee. Jack so Wilde, sensitive our... as always, <laughs> um, is describing a movie I've never heard of. <laughs> Everyone and probably bing, doesn't exist. Bing, the butterfly flies away, and Elijah Wood, and jerk it off. And <laughs> see what you can find. Jack Waz, ladies and gentlemen. You always have to toss in that one at the end. 
I mean, Bing uh, so, is for Doom. Uh, Jack, have you ever had a gun pointed at you? I feel like the answer might be <laughs> yes, yes. I have, actually. And what sense did you lose in that moment? Uh, well, I lost my erection. Obviously. But other than that, um, well, when it was pointed at me, it wasn't loaded. Uh, well, my, that doesn't count. Well, I had, well, I had, I had an army friend. Uh, we worked at a summer camp together, and he pointed a gun at me one time. He actually stabbed my friend Jay. <laughs> Great story. So that's what happens when you go to uh, when you go to Iraq. You come back and just start Stab. killing. So you didn't lose your sense of smell. Like I didn't <laughs> lose my. That's I, I, the important takeaway yeah, from this story. I, yeah, I didn't. You know, watch out for guys with PTSD and knives, but you won't lose your sense of smell if you have a gun pointed at you. What if you're a dog? You probably would. Okay, as well, Wilfred demonstrated. Science. I am not sure I bought that <laughs> that happens to dogs, but okay. Well, the explanation is not the important thing. Right. How is this that... came about to be, the fun part is watching Wilfred just be completely depressed and morbid and dark. And also... Emo Wilfred. Yeah. Also, um, his initial response to losing his sense of smell is terrific. Uh, where he rips the underpants <laughs> off of the sleeping homeless man. Nothing. That he just basically framed for owning an unlicensed gun. <laughs> and gun, yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, the exact... Face deep. Face deep in the soiled underwear. And can't get anything out of it. You know, I'm pretty sure that was a plot point in Butterfly Flies Away. I'm sure it was. I, I, think, I think it was a reference I'm, to Elijah, Wo Elijah Wood's earlier work. I'm sure it was. And I'm now 90% convinced you're making this movie up. <laughs> Bing it. Uh, all right, folks, bing it. Uh, but Greg, you look yes. like you wanted to say something for a while. I was just in shock. It is <laughs> a complete stupor. No, Much I like did, Wilfred. I, did, exactly. I really like this turn. It's something that we haven't seen before because Wilfred is always dark and crazy and manic, uh, but never to this sort of overly subdued effect. And it's not something I'd want to see every episode, but right. man, yeah. oh man, did they play it well it, it was, tonight. It was, like, I, I wasn't really buying the episode until the third act. Like, oh, I, I was, it I was, really picked up. Yeah, I was, I was a little bored. Yeah. I was like, where's this going? But the second, like, the third act got great. Yes. There was a lot going on, but once they finally hit the, uh, the emo Wilfred beat, right. that was great. Also, Wilfred's progression into emo-ness, really spot on. I mean, like... <laughs> Like, he, he starts, he learns how to read, which is a bad <laughs> first fall. That's a bad first step, parents. <laughs> Don't let your kids, I never learned how to read, and look how well I'm doing. Don't teach your kids to read. And uh, then, oh, it progresses into him reading, like, all of this political crap. Uh, and Marley and Me, which and was Marley, a super <laughs> nice <laughs> great, great, great joke. Uh, and then he's reading Immanuel Kant. Uh, which is which, uh, which if, is, is if, if anyone if anyone in our listening audience has ever been in a situation where they've been in a comedy troupe, or they've done improv or sketch or anything like that, you've already heard every cunt joke possible. Yes, his name sounds like a bad word, and I'm sick of hearing jokes about it, yeah. people. So sorry, I'm, Wilfred writers, but that's an old hat joke. Yeah, I I'm, mean we've. I've heard, like, from personal experience, I've heard four or five sketches with the exact same premise. Well, how did this, how did this one stack up to those four or five others? If you had to rate them... This on one didn't game. go on for five minutes. It wasn't delivered by an 18-year-old with weird acne and weird, a weirder accent, so it's pretty good. You're getting into extremely esoteric territory. <laughs> Literally no one knows what you're talking about. I think including the people in no, this No, I room. know what he's talking about. But... Yeah, I do agree that it was short, to the point, I liked it, and I think that that scene in general, him in the basement with the record player and just being oh my God. dark and Did moody, it. probably my favorite scene of Wilford so far this it was, season. It was really, really fantastic. Really well executed. Also, did you guys just hear my fart on the radio? Thank you, Jack, for pointing it out, because I didn't, and I would have been fine without having known that. So um, Wilfred puts but, on eyeliner. Yeah, uh, and basically the next step after reading uh, Immanuel Kant is uh, is that you are going to put on eyeliner and possibly try to kill yourself. I'm surprised they didn't do a shoegazing reference though, like him just listening to like Joy Division and being all mopey. 
Yeah. Yeah. That would have been fun. Although I, Actually, I, yeah, technically the next step is listening to Joy Division. Yeah. And, then and then hanging killing yourself. yourself. Then hanging yourself. So, Wilfred actually hung himself for a second. Yeah. yeah he I did. was... 100% certain they were going to do an autoerotic asphyxiation joke where he runs and, where he runs down to take Wilfred down and he's, and just, he's just jerking his little dog junk it yeah. get it got to a dark place which we're going to go into a little bit later but before we do that hey we got to say you guys Yes. You like to shop for stuff, don't you? I do. I mean, I don't like to, but if you're a person you participating in the Society. social economic structure that we live in, you have to. Yeah. It keeps, are, are you talking about it drugs? keeps us afloat as a country. It does. When you buy crap. So, you're creating and jobs. And a great place to buy crap. Is SilkRoad.com. Amazon.com. Do you know what Silk Road is? Uh, no, and I don't want you to talk about it. <laughs> Amazon.com uh, is a wonderful website. Absolutely but sometimes you just don't feel like typing into your navigation bar. So you know what you can do? The A button on my computer button so is, is broken. So it is. It's, yeah, just, he can't I, even I do it. Yeah, Greg binged a little too much, and uh, now his computer is a mess. So if you're on AfterBuzzTV.com, which you probably are because you love us, like a lot, uh, we have a little banner ad there. It goes to Amazon. Click on that. Takes you right to Amazon.com, and you just shop like you normally would. Same basic deal, but you just got there from clicking on an ad on our page. And we, we get, a, get kickback. a kickback. And we need that to bring you guys the fantastic entertainment that we honestly do enjoy bringing you every week. So Keeps the lights on. So keep you do that, and we'll keep talking about stuff so that you can watch us talk and listen to us talk and be happy. So what Silk Road is, is an online <laughs> drug marketplace where you can buy literally any drug under the sun. Thank you, Jack Waz. You use bitcoins. Thank you, Jack Waz. Uh, so, Wilfred. Remember this show? I remember Wilfred. I remember Ryan from this episode. You know what I don't remember? Anyone else? Anyone else. Yeah. Where were they? Very strange. We, we had Rob Riggle. Riggle. We had Rob Riggle. Yeah, he's the only person that has been in any other episodes and yeah. not much yeah i'd like to add yeah, he was only i don't think he was even in uh, i don't think he's been on tv yet but he was in the flashback episode that was online no he was he was for a hot second in the the one where uh, ryan brings wilfred to work yeah oh, okay, okay. the office dog. But but has, has it, one line has it been established where jenna is did i miss that we were actually talking about this earlier uh on our podcast i believe it was last week right. we discussed it where Basically, it, we need to establish now that Wilfred is Ryan's dog. Yeah. yeah. We can totally have Jenna be the neighbor. That makes sense. Great. But have her. She's been missing so often, yeah. as we've seen in these well, episodes. I Tell her that, she's, like, she's hey, no I'm not longer, around. Oh, wait, she's uh, no longer a love interest. I mean, well, I, I think what happened, uh, if uh, memory serves, is that she and Chris, what's his face? The butthole. Her butthole fiance. Her boyfriend, oh, yeah. Oz. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, it, they're dealing with their stuff, and they can't have Wilfred around because Wilfred makes it hard for them to deal with their stuff. They're projecting think, on to Wilfred. I, I think that's what I, I missed an episode. Yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, because you there? were you were uh, in a stupor. What was I doing? I can't remember. Anyway, so what? Yeah, what, what of what course, happened? you can't remember because you were drunk as hell. That's true. So he was on vacation. Yeah. So what, what, what did I miss? For him. Well, no, like, God, now that I remember, I was drunk as shit. But <laughs> I, I don't r remember. That. What no. happened? Did they die? Well, did everyone no, they, died. No everyone one died. died. But here's the thing, and this is what I think we're all circling back to in our own weird sort of ways: is that we haven't seen any of these other relationships develop so far. Right. This was a very Ryan and Wilfred centric episode, and that was it. And I think it worked because that's what you need to make one of these episodes work is to obviously right. have them. Uh, but it's kind of interesting to just seeing what is essentially Ryan, depending on your school of thought, arguing with himself right. for a third. I minutes, have a theory. Which is? I believe that Ryan is in purgatory, much like the final season of Lost. And the other people in his life just pop in and out of it because they're not as bad as Brian or Ryan because he tried to kill himself. But okay, why? So, why are they popping so, in and so out a more? It's a flash sideways. It's a flash. And... It's a flash sideways, and they're all going to wind up in a church kissing each other. Uh, all right. That's going to be the season finale. I have a feeling that's not 
if Wilfred ends up in a church, it's going to be doing something blasphemous. Probably. And I wouldn't have it any other way, <clears throat> but probably not where they're going to go. But yeah, but one hopes. But and back 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 to the topic. I mean, after you know the there was a great last week's episode was great with the sister, you know, there's a lot of character development and Yeah, we returned back to It was a very big moment for, you know, for a sister, but now it's just just Elijah Wood and a guy in a dog outfit. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Again, I'm totally yeah, fine the with the that. Show. But it it's interesting to see that we're into the second season this far. And other than introducing a new love interest, and yeah, breaking some ground with the sister, which was great. I, I harped on it last week, how much I loved it. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of other developments going on. It's all nope. been Ryan and Wilfred. All Ryan and Wilfred and their own sort of internal head games. Yes. Which, fine. Okay, I can deal with that. But mm. do we need to... Is this going to be like a one-off episode? Or is this something that is going to continue on throughout is this the season. A Ryan, is this a Ryan Wilfred season where they don't... Where, the, yeah, everyone else is just out the window. Yeah. In the church kissing. Question. It, yes, that's... in the church kissing. Hey, guys. Yes. You heard of this company called Apple? Uh, yeah, didn't they record the Beatles albums? Uh, mm -hmm. Might be the same. I, I think it's the same company. Yeah, Apple Inc. Uh, they have this thing uh, called uh, It Tunes, something like that. It uh, tunes. Yeah, uh, is it, it French? It tunes. Okay, that's what it is. It sounds um, German. It grind apple, something like. That. Yeah. Uh, they it, have it be nine apple you in this it, it tunes uh, thingy. Um, there's this app. I think that means appetizer, but it's weird because you don't eat it. So you, an, so you so you go to a TGI Fridays yes. and you order the iTunes app sampler. I I think so how much ranch dressing should you get with an itunes app sampler i that's a question uh for the does clerics it, does it pair well with monte cristo sandwich probably um can i get can i get everything it? goes with a monte cristo sandwich can i Jack? get it slathered in jack daniels i don't know rub? i don't know but i know that the special thing you need to ask for with this app sampler that you get at tgi fridays is the podcast app that they do over at itunes because over there you can find I don't know how because it it's an appetizer I don't know uh, but over there you Just can find stick our your fingers podcast. in the appetizer and pull it apart. You can find our podcast and uh, you can uh, what you can do is you can rate our podcast uh, hopefully highly uh, or but not but obviously you know, probably not <laughs> <laughs> on this on this topic I'm very disappointed in you audience last week mm. we requested that whoever made the nastiest comment about me. We get a free DVD, mm -hmm. and we have not gotten a single comment on our iTunes. Shall we extend it a week? We shall. Not only that, I will now give uh, whoever says just the nastiest, just most mean really spirit. Really? Go after them, just, guys. I mean, there's a lot you can go after. Uh, just the nastiest, just most debasing thing possible about me. I will give you a DVD copy of Clear and Present Danger, starring Harrison Ford, in a Patriots game. Patriot game DVD box because Hot I shot. lost the original box. How could you get any better than that? Go rate After Buzz comment TV exclusive. It's, so get on iTunes. That's rate two comment. Tom Clancy classics kind of combined into one. Honestly, people, we really appreciate it. If you go yeah, and rate, and it really helps us out. Don't ask how. Don't ask why. Just do it and tell your friends. Yes. Yeah. Guys, like, I got a question for you. I probably have an answer. How dark is too dark? Ooh. <laughs> well, it depends who he is. That's... Mm. Jack was, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This episode, as we were harp harping on earlier... It's dark as, dark Wil as shit. Wilfred tries to kill himself. He actually, not in like a cute, funny way, no, like, ah ha uh -huh. He straight he up jumps. jumps with a belt around his neck off of a second-story porch. Also, so does Bear. Well, yeah, bear, bear. That's like the light-hearted version that I would have expected. If someone was like, "Oh, yeah. well, Wilfred's gonna kill himself," but, I would have expected, oh, "I'm dying, right?" But I mean, but, it's it's very dark, but it's also it's it's worse because Wilfred's doing it to get a nine thousand dollar doghouse. He doesn't give <laughs> a two shits about life or Ryan, but really, really wants a. What's in that fancy doghouse? I don't know. I is there like really a doggy bidet? Know. Hopefully. For $9,000, I would, I would be... hope it had two. 
I'd pay. No, I don't have a dog. I'd pay nine thousand dollars for a thing with two doggy bidets. <laughs> Get on it. His and her universe. Doggy bidets. Yeah. <laughs> dog uh, bidets. <laughs> I think. Bring? I think we've landed on something, you guys. You really have. Dog bidets. You know, I bet you could Bing those and go to Amazon through our page and buy dog bidets. Dog bidets. And dog if you bidets. haven't, or you can't, then we're gonna start that up and make millions. Millions. I mean, people uh, love dogs, and people love clean assholes. Hey. All right, and now we're going to stop Jack from talking and talk about how dark this episode is some more. It's also it, literally dark. Yeah, it's like, like, like the lighting lit. was dark. He was completely shut off in the basement. He had paper over the windows. Yeah. And, and, and that beautiful FX to something great with a lot of their shows where they have just the best, weirdest stock music Yeah. that they can throw in, like in here and Sunny. It's just like they have amazing music cues that they probably pay nothing for. Oh yeah, the record playing, yeah, which that was, was just like super dark, creepy, but hilarious. Yeah, um, it's, but it's like something that a spinster during the depression will listen to, like right <laughs> after she thinks about her son that killed himself. Right. Which, no, that lost his arm in the factory. That's it. And then was fired, and then they burned <laughs> all the fired food. because he lost his arm. Yeah. What a simpler which time. Which is why that we was. need unions. Thank you. That's surprisingly progressive for <laughs> Jack Laws. I mean, I was talking about dog assholes a minute ago, yeah, so yeah. might as well have one. Thanks for bringing that up again, by the way. Uh, this is definitely darker than anything we've seen so far this season. Yeah. I'm even going to venture and say possibly darker than anything we've seen in the series. Uh, the only Except for Ryan's suicide? Well, Attempted. even that was... That was the intro, and even that was like, haha, I can't get the note right. Like, very sort of had a touch of hilarity to it. And even though Wilfred is jumping off the porch and he has his little emo haircut, <laughs> which is just hilarious, he's still killing himself in front of our very eyes. Or attempting to. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and say that besides, with maybe the exception of the episode in the first season with the nursing home, uh -huh. this is the darkest episode that I've seen so far. I, I do have a technical question. This is something that, yes. you know, I've, I've always wondered, always thought a little bit about this, but it uh, came to light tonight with a megaphone. Mm -hmm. So Wilfred, he's, you know, is a man to Ryan, but he's talked to everyone else. Did he have the megaphone or not? Because he was shouting through the megaphone. And I'm sure if the guys there have been like, hey, there's a dog with a megaphone. I'm, gonna, cute, I'm gonna go ahead and say no, he didn't have that. So it's an imaginary megaphone. Yeah. It's a metaphoric megaphone. Uh, or symbolism. I don't know what the proper yeah. Yeah. <laughs> metaphone. I like that. A, yeah, it's a we metaphone. also need to invent that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's Wilfred is so loud, barking so loud that that's their way of conveying it. Yeah, is that okay. he has to have a also. Megaphone. How does he tie the belt around his neck? I don't. It looked like a pretty large belt. Like, I feel that even with paws, you could just kind of... Although he's it. been reading, you know. Yeah, that's true. Which helps you develop opposable thumbs? It does. Yes. Question mark. You know, what we should try to do is put some oven mitts on John, then see if he can tie his own noose. Find out next week, guys. <laughs> or just read Infinite Jest. <laughs> One of the two. Okay. One wait, after the other. Because, wait a minute. Because so kill I'm gonna, wait a minute. That? You're going to put oven mitts on me and make me read Infinite Jest? Yeah. Because that'll help you develop the opposable thumbs that you need. Right, okay. And suicidal <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> right, right. Okay. All right. Guys. Great. Another episode, another reference to David Foster Wallace killing himself. Real quick before we get off it. Is this too dark? We need an answer once and for all. Can we go further? Can we get weirder? Can we get more suicide? Damn right they can. I'm, should they? I have faith they that should. they can mm. uh, and, and that they will. Should or not is I I don't know. It's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. I certainly hope it does. Yeah, I, mean, I, yes. I was a fan of this episode. I like where it ended up. I thought the emotional payoff was a lot stronger yes. because of how dark it got. Yes. Gonna mm -hmm. alienate a lot of people, but for an audience of one, I'm digging it. You know who I haven't heard from in a while? Who? A trucker that's into AfterBuzz. I think. Yeah. Hey there, good buddies. The handle's Wooly Bear. I'm a truck driving man, but I'm not that old school kind of truck driving man. No, I like to listen to podcasts while I'm driving through these great United States of ours. And my favorite podcasts in the world are from AfterBuzz TV. And why? 
Because <laughs> After Buzz TV is like a post-game wrap-up show for all your favorite TV shows, like Jersey Shore, Dancing with the Stars, Mad Men, and a whole truckload more. I like listening to my Gossip Girl podcast, catching up with all my fellow fans and getting all the latest news and gossip. You know, I got some strong opinions. And After Buzz TV lets me share those opinions with thousands of other listeners. woo what a feeling. I used to doze off on those lonely stretches of road. And don't worry, I got the cruise control. But now I'm wide awake and listening to all the After Buzz TV goodness. <laughs> Check them out. Give them a holler. And tell them the old woolly bear sent you. Yeah. XOXO Wooly Bear. Yeah. You Wooly keep bear. on trucking, buddy. You super, super weird, buddy. <laughs> so, we get, some, on the road. we get some interesting news. We got a little bit of uh, TV news. You may have heard of this thing called Comic Con. It's quite no, a, I haven't. Quite a large event that goes on, has comics, news about TV. <laughs> it really and doesn't film. have that much comics anymore. Well, yeah. It hasn't for about, you know, decade. Fine. It's like a Hollywood hoopla where you get to go out down in show, san diego yeah, yeah and show off how much cool stuff your product or movie whatever has wilfred was at comic-con and a lovely little site called collider.com we've used them before in the past I they have some so. really good yes. uh, Fantastic information people. they had him. they had an interview with pretty much the entire cast of wilfred and it's really short but it's really sweet I would definitely suggest checking it out. One thing that I want to bring up from there is we've been talking about Jason Gunn a lot in the interviews that he gives, but he points out something really, really interesting in this. They ask him uh, whether or not Wilfred's intentions are to help uh, Elijah Wood, Ryan. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, if you think about it, where Wilfred is Ryan's subconscious, which is a valid point. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your subconscious is self-destructive and trying to kill you and make you fail. <laughs> he doesn't use his he doesn't use those exact words, but that's the basic sentiment. And something that I had never thought of before. We always talk about, oh, well, is it helpful in the end? Is he really just he doesn't care, he's hurtful? He may be he's human nature trying to kill Ryan. He's human nature in dog form. He also points out that it's really hot in that dog suit. I can and imagine. And he really no hates, hates summer days shooting in L.A. <laughs> uh, that, he must, that's his fault for shooting must, in Venice. It must suck now, too, because it's been humid as butt here. Yeah, well, it's been nasty on the west side. I mean, you're assuming this is all happening in real time, John, say, which another, is totally uh, not. Another great uh, Comic-Con moment, if you guys check out Collider, check out Uproxx, check out pretty much any site that's covered it, uh, there's been some fantastic Wilfred cosplay. There's a bunch of Ugh. people, not just furries, but people in homemade Wilfred outfits, and there's one, which is Jason Gunn, surrounded by dudes in Wilfred outfits, and it's pretty great. That sounds, that sounds real hot. So anyways, you guys should go and check it out, uh, Collider.com. Again, you can find the interview. It's right there. If Bing you it. can't find it, then you, you got problems. <laughs> but you got anyways. problems, but use Bing to find it for you. Right on. Anyways, I think that about sums it up for news and gossip. That Oh, oh I didn't even get to ask now, for it. You're after Buzz TV. Pretty <laughs> oh, I love the flashy effects that we have going I on. I know. So high tech. <sighs> Predict some stuff. Go. I predict that everyone's going to kiss in a church. You already predict that. It doesn't count. Done. I predict that this can't be the only Wilfred Ryan only episode. Mm. We're going to see that relationship between him and his new love interest, Blossom. We're finally going to get back to Jenna as the neighbor. And Wilfred's going to fuck it up. And hopefully we're going to address the issue that Wilfred is no longer her dog. Needs Go. to be Ryan. Uh, I think someone someone's actually going to kill themselves this season. Ooh, yeah. you know, super dark. I think it's going to be Rob Riggle. I think uh, this whole thing's getting tied up in is going to be a complete scam. He's going to wind up, like the last shot of the season is going to be him, well, Elijah Wood walking into his office with Wilfred, to who Rob Riggle hanging with his pants around his ankles. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be Mad Men. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Too late. Uh, Mad Men died. Mad Men died, guys. <laughs> Mad Men died. Shame. I love Mad Men. Mad Men. <laughs> Hey. Madman killed himself at the end of Mad Men this season. Hey, Everyone, since... hug yourselves. 
Well, since Siobhan isn't here, I'm going to plug uh, her event for her. She's doing a play. You should go follow, follow her on Twitter uh, and find out all the details. Um, she's been tweeting about it like crazy. I am at Generic Maverick on Twitter. You can also check out a web series I'm working on on GameRevolution.com. It's called The Grind. Check it out. I'm at Jack Waz on Twitter. Uh, I never update it, so friend me on Facebook. or Now, don't use LinkedIn. That thing's shitty. Uh, and everyone, watch Final Offer. It's on reruns on Discovery, and we need your help and support to make you go to a second season because that would be the best thing ever. Great show, by the way. I am on the Twitters at, at J. Dugan Barrett. You can also find me uh, doing the AfterBuzz TV South Park podcast. And in the newspapers this week. Right, because I'm going to take yeah, Jack Walls yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And then, whatever. Bye, everybody. Tune Oh, sorry. Tune in next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz for you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV.